I overlook a whole lot of things. I bite my tongue about a lot of things because regardless to what our color or religion is, we still must work together. We still have to live together, you know, and at the end of the day, we all bleed the same kind of blood. Well, when I came to Williamsport, um, uh, I arrived here in 1996. I get off the bus going to work and I was stopped and searched because I looked like someone that people were looking for. It did not give me an exact description except that I was black. Some people don't believe me, the kids don't believe me, but when I was a child, I seen a Klansman um, from here to like the end of the block. I wasn't called the N-word per se, but they said the N-word around me, okay? And they were talking about just my race in general. And they just happened to say the word, you know? And I'm like, dude, you're like my age. What, what's going on here? If I get a good education, if I work hard, if I am law abiding, then Williamsport will make a place for me. This country will make a place for me. I, and, and I've done that. Gone to some of the top schools that the, this nation has to offer. Have a very lucrative business myself. And law abiding, not committing crimes. However, that does not exempt me as we see it that from law enforcement coming and pulling me over. I've had them pull me over for nothing. Just to check. Show me your papers. <laughs> Show me that you truly belong. So I think there's racism everywhere, you know, and it's definitely here too in Williamsport. I mean, you know, let's be honest with ourselves. Um, it, it definitely is, but you know, I don't look at me personally, I don't look at color. You know, because underneath this color, you know, we all bleed red. You know? I mean, we're in an area where it's mostly Republicans, I feel like, um, and us African-Americans are the minority. So little things like that, diversity day, things like that that bring us together, I feel like they go a long way. So things are changing. Um, they need to change probably a little bit faster. Um, but it's all hinged upon being able to look at something good, but look at what's wrong with it. Um, if we're afraid to say, hey, we can improve this, or this is good, but this still needs a, a fine-tuned, then we'll never get things better. It's not un-American to critique. So if you take self-realization in what you're doing and how you're saying stuff, like, you know, feeling that, oh, y'all, you guys are wasting your time sitting there protesting, get a life protesting, Black Lives Matter, all lives matter. I'm sorry, yes, all lives matter, but is all lives being killed by police? No. It is an, an event of where there's a lot of black people are being killed by police, which is happening, been happening for years, and the police are getting away with it. This isn't anything new. The only difference right now is that even though uh, African Americans have been expressing that this has been happening for eons, now you get a chance to see it. And I think what's angering a lot of people, myself included, is that when I told you it was happening, you say, ah, not really. But now that I'm showing you it's happening, you're still saying, ah, well, there's got to be something else going on to it. And it was like, what else will it take to be able to share with you an experience? You know, having these conversations, and some of, of these conversations will be difficult, but that's the way that we make progress. And so I think conversations are helpful, but it's gotta lead to meaningful changes. Um, and it absolutely has to lead to um, policies and procedures that uh, promote community, that promote togetherness, and that promote us moving forward in a positive direction. But I need to be able to talk change and be a part of that change. So instead of um, saying those people, that's another cliche that separates individuals and it separates them by race, creed, color, um, sexual orientation or what have you. Um, we're all people created by God um, to get, and we need each other. It is a proven fact that we need each other. 
So love is the one that conquers all things. For me, as long as I stay on course with God, putting him first and looking at it in that manner, things are good every day. When you have a community and you have people that are not feeling a part of the community, they have no choice but to seek to destroy the community. They have no vested interest. But, and if you keep all the people out, the out, so-called outsiders out, you no longer continue to grow because there's no cross-cultural pollination happening. There's no growth of ideas. With women's support, it's just the only change you can do is just you have to start within yourselves. With, you know, instead of blaming, take sympathy and then try to change the way you, you think about these problems or you're used to think about these problems. I think one of the issues is that many of our um, people in our white community, um, because they are not used to talking to people that are minorities or black, they um, just don't know. And all they can go on is what they've seen in their influences whether it was TV, media, um, propaganda of any kind growing up in the 50s, 60s, 70s. And now um, things are different. A lot of stuff is different now. Um, and as long as you come alongside and ask them, talk to them, why do you wear tattoos? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? And accept the culture the way they are. I can't look at you and say you need to be like I grew up. I need to accept you as who you are and how you grew up and trust in your character. And if that character doesn't suit me, then that's okay too. I just not going to choose to be a part of it. I'm not going to put you down for it. I think it's kind of naive and maybe a little bit dangerous. Um, if we don't take steps, proactive steps, progressive steps, um, before we have any problem to prevent so, I mean, even though we haven't had an issue uh, that gives us state or national uh, notoriety um, or criticism, we should actually probably look at training and accountability and different ways to uh, uh, create relationship between the different institutions of the community right now before it becomes a problem. Stay engaged in the process and make sure that um, we're all holding each other accountable, that we're not saying one thing and then come to find out we end up doing something else or we just don't do anything. 80% of the um, Caucasians I met out here are wonderful. Everyone's great out here and welcoming. And there's maybe about 10% who don't feel that way. But for the most part, this area loves diversity. They want change. They want things to be better. They don't want the things that we're seeing on TV, the violence and all of that, they don't want that out here. So um, I feel like it's a great thing that is happening and that we're all seeing the city for what it really is. You know, it's about love.